In this video we're going to continue looking at the gas laws and we're also going to look at how we go about calculating the energy changes in the working fluid, in this case the air contained within the cylinder. Now on the left hand side we have some data and this data has been taken from a previous task. Now in the last video we carried out various different operations on our air contained within our cylinder but in each of those examples we started with a pressure of 2.5 bar which is equivalent to 2.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals and we also started with a volume of 375 centimeters cubed which is the same as 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed and finally we started with a temperature of 25 degrees C or 298 Kelvin those are the values that we started with in SI units in one of those examples we heated our gas at constant pressure so P2 equaled P1 and we raised our temperature from 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C to 205 degrees C or 478 Kelvin and what we did in that example was we calculated the equivalent final volume after that heating had taken place. So all of these variables here were either given or calculated previously. And the reason I'm going to use those in this video is because we're going to calculate some new parameters. What we're going to start off by calculating is the mass of working gas that we had in that cylinder. And the equation at the top there is another general gas equation, except this one states that PV equals MRT. Well we know what P is, P is our pressure, and we know what V is, V is our volume. And we also know what T is, T is our temperature. And we could use either P1, V1 and T1, or P2, V2 and T2, and this equation would still hold true, providing we used all of our conditions before the operation or all of our conditions after the operation. The only new variable we have there is something called the specific gas constant. And the specific gas constant for air has a value of 287. Now I don't want you to worry about this too much. Questions will always specify the gas constant for the working gas. But we do need to be aware that this is a specific gas constant and it's different for different gases. So we're going to begin by calculating the mass of our gas. Now once we have our mass, we can calculate some energy changes. The first energy change we can calculate is the change in internal energy of the gas. So the gas contained within our cylinder there is going to have energy or internal energy and if we know the mass of the gas and we know the change in temperature we can calculate the change in internal energy of the gas. We do need to use another constant and it's one that we have seen before for liquids, specific heat capacity. But when we calculate energy changes for gases we actually have two specific heat capacities. We have a specific heat capacity at constant volume, represented here by C subscript V, specific heat capacity at constant volume. And we also have specific heat capacity at constant pressure, C subscript P. If we use our specific heat capacity at constant volume, we calculate the change in internal energy of our gas. But if we use the specific heat capacity at constant pressure, we calculate something else. We calculate the change in enthalpy in the system. And here's the key difference. Delta U is the change in internal energy of our gas, whereas delta H, or the change in enthalpy, is the change of energy in our system. And the big difference between the two is highlighted on the next line. The change in enthalpy is the change in internal energy of the gas plus any work that's been done. So the gas has actually done work on the system when it's expanded. And we'll clarify this a little bit more when we calculate each of these variables. So let's begin by calculating our mass, then we'll calculate our internal energy, our enthalpy, and we'll also calculate the work being done by the gas as it expands. Okay, so to make the mass the subject of this equation, it's helpful to consider R and T as a group. And all we need to do is divide each side of our equation by that group, R times T. And we'll be left with M equals PV over RT. Now, as I mentioned before, providing we use P1, V1, T1, or P2, V2, T2, we're going to come out with exactly the same answer for the mass. The one variable that we haven't been given yet is the value of R for air. And the value of R for air is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. 
So 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin, where joules per kilogram Kelvin are the SI units of the specific gas constant. Let's plug in some values then. M equals P1, 2.5 times 10 to the 5, times V1, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4 and I'll put each of those into brackets to remind me they're in standard form divided by 287 which is our gas constant times our temperature T1 in Kelvin 298 and that will give us the mass of our gas and the mass of gas contained in that cylinder is 1.09616 times 10 to the minus 3, SI units of mass is kilograms. Now just to put that into context, that's exactly the same as 1.096 grams. So we're talking a very small mass of gas. But for the purpose of our next calculations, we'll leave our mass in kilograms and we'll add it to our list of variables. M is 1.09616 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. Now we're going to calculate our different energies. Okay, so for this part of the question we need another couple of variables. We need the specific heat capacity of air at constant pressure, which is 1005 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And once again, please don't worry, these will always be given in the questions. And we also have a specific heat capacity at constant volume, which is 718 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So now what we can do is calculate our change in internal energy when we heat our gas from 298 Kelvin up to 478 Kelvin. And the change in internal energy, delta U, was MCV delta T. And if we plug in our values, we've got our mass, 1.09616 times 10 to the minus 3, times CV, 718, times our change in temperature, well, 478 minus 298 is 180. And that gives us a change in internal energy equal to 141.7 joules to one decimal place. That's the change in energy of the working gas. But we're also going to calculate the total change in energy, which we said was delta H, the enthalpy. And that's calculated by MCP delta T. So once again, we've got our 1.09616 times 10 to the minus three kilograms times CP this time, 1005, times the change in temperature of 180. And this time, the total change in energy of our system equals 198.3 joules. So we can see here that the change in energy of our working fluid is less than the total change of energy, or the total amount of energy that we've input into the system. And we had an equation that linked these together. We said that delta H, the total energy in the system, equals delta U, the internal energy of the gas, plus W, the work done by the gas as it expands. Or we can say that a different way. W equals delta H minus delta U, which is the total energy stored in the system, minus the internal energy of the gas. And we can input our numbers for this. 198.3 minus 141.7, giving us a work done by the gas of 56.6 joules. So in heating the gas, the internal energy of the gas has increased. But in addition to that happening, the gas has expanded. It's increased the volume of the container. And the work that it's done is 56.6 joules. Therefore, the total energy in the system is the internal energy of the gas, delta U, plus this energy, or this work that's being done by the gas, of 56.6 joules. Now, interestingly enough, there is another way that we could have calculated that work at the bottom. And you may recall from the other slide, I had a statement that said W 
was P delta V. Well, in our example, P is fixed. Our example specified that P remained at 2.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. But what we have is a volume change. The volume is expanding from 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cubed to 6.01 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cubed. So the gas is doing work against the container. So let's just create some space and then we'll use another method for calculating that work done by the gas on the cylinder. So as we've just said there, W equals P delta V. So what we're actually saying there is P V2 minus V1. V2 minus V1 represents the change in volume. And we can input our values. P is 2.5 times 10 to the 5. V2, and I'm going to use two sets of brackets here, 6.01 times 10 to the minus 4, minus V1, 3.75 times 10 to the minus 4, and I'm going to close both sets of brackets. And that's going to give me a work done equal to, the same as before, 56.6 joules. And this just highlights that as a gas expands, it actually does work on the container, or in this case, it's doing work against the piston.